Okay, guys, so I think it's pretty much two o'clock, so I'm going to begin. So, uh, first of all, hopefully you guys were able to do the, uh, at least read the article over genetic linkage when it comes to the Khan Academy site that I sent you. And hopefully you were able to maybe start working out some of those genetic linkage problems, which some of those last few are definitely difficult and it makes you think about exactly what's going on. But what I want to know is, first of all, have you guys tried working uh, some of the problems? I think most of you have possibly tried maybe going over it. Okay, well, what I want to do is I want to work through two of them. I want to do, uh, I want to work through number two and then number three. And once again, number three, there was an actual error on it. Um, and I'll talk about that. So I'm gonna do two and three. And I wanna leave four and five. I don't wanna go over those yet. I'll give you some hints on those, but I wanna see if you could tackle those. Those are kind of the ones that make you think a little bit more about where these genes are going to be located. So if you pull up your genetic problems sheet, if you hopefully you have that out, just... So if you have your genetic problem, see, I want to go over number two right here. Um, so number two, notice we have a total of four genes on there. And there's a couple things that you have, that you've read that hopefully you remember, is that the greater the crossover frequency that you see between genes, the further they're going to be away from each other. Uh, the less amount of crossover frequency, they tend to be closer to each other. So that's kind of the big thing to remember as you're trying to work this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a white screen. And I'm going to try my best to use this um, to help you kind of with number two. So the first thing is you draw a chromosome. which that. So there's my very kind of sad chromosome. And notice when we look at the numbers, the one that has the greatest distance for question number, for number two, I believe is 10%. And let me just bring that up real quick. See that. Uh, notice it is between actually 11% between C and S. So this is 11%, that's the greatest. So C and S have to be the furthest apart from each other. So let me see if I can bring back my white screen. So what I'm gonna do is I kind of make a little mark here. So that's one here and I'm gonna put my C right here. And then I'm going to put my S right around here. And I know that this right here has to be, once again, going to be, oops, oh, that is awful. Uh, it has to be 11%. Okay, so that's the one that's for this apart. And then notice if you go back to your actual problem, Notice that we have W and S that are actually going to be at 8% away from each other. Uh, we have also C and B and B and S that are 5.5% away from each other. So this is where, okay, since I know that W and S are 8%, I'm going to try to do that one first. So I'm going to go back to my white screen. Let me see if I can do that real quick. And so this is 11%. So S to W, I'm going to say it's maybe about, maybe right here. And that's going to be, once again, right here, that's going to be 8%. So... There's my C, W, and S genes. And if I go back to the problem, notice my next two is B, so C and B is 5%, B and S. So that looks like 
be. It's going to be smack in the middle of CNS since it's pretty much halfway there. So I go back to my white screen. And I'm going to put it smack in the middle right there. And that's going to be my B gene. And then once again, from here to here, it's going to be 5.5. And then from here to here is 5.5. And notice all the numbers should now add up. Notice that C to S was 11%. So C to W is 5.5, B to S is 5.5. So that means this has to be, once again, that's, that adds up to 11%. So that's kind of our correct here. And once again, you could look back at your And notice that C to W, it tells you there that it's 3%. And notice eight plus three is going to be 11%. So we've accounted for all the genes, C, W, B, and S. And now when we look at our problem, we've pretty much have set up our map. So, so far, do we have any questions about um, how we have drawn our map? Mr. V? Yes. So do the numbers always have to add up? They should, they should okay. add up very closely. So I don't think any of, like I've worked through the problems and all these problems, the numbers should add up. Uh, once again, there was an error on number three and I'll talk about that one next. Okay. okay. Again, Mr. V, uh, the, yes. um, <clears throat> okay, so the farther apart, uh, the, sorry, the greater the percentage is how farther, how farther they are apart. Yes. Once again, okay. so the greater the crossover frequency, the further apart those two are going to be. So that's why I started. I usually always start my maps that way. I look for the ones that are furthest apart and kind of put those in. And then I try to figure out, because it's pretty much trial and error, trying to put the other genes, making sure that the numbers come up and add up correctly. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so I'll give you guys maybe a couple, maybe a minute to look at this, see if you have any other questions. Okay, so I think, let me just, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna continue sharing this a little bit longer. Let me see if there's any questions on the chat. Let's see. Okay, there is a question that someone says, I read the article, parts of it are confusing. There are, it's a very dense article, but I would say the most important parts, the questions that I've seen them ask on the AP exam are the ones that deal with the ones that are on the genetic problem set. Can you construct kind of a genetic map or a chromosome map of some genes? Like they usually will give you a chart like this with the frequencies and then you have to kind of construct and then kind of- It's so hard. And then they kind of go over, um, they kind of go over like which ones are going to be inherited together. Once again, the genes that are most closely, uh, the ones that are closer together are going to be the ones that are going to be inherited together. So I'll let you guys try to answer that question. Maybe you could discuss it with each other. Does it matter where we put the letters below? No, guys, it doesn't matter where you put the letters. It's up to you where you wanna put the letters. They could be in the chromosome, outside the chromosome, it's up to you. So when I ask, what does the 8% represent? Uh, if I go back to the drawing, let me go back to that screen real quick. 
So notice that we have an 8% between W and S. So that 8% is the distance between W and S, the crossover frequency. So if I go back and share a drawing, notice that's the percent right here from S to W, that's our 8% frequency. And that's how, fig how we figured out how far apart they were from each other. Okay, let's see. Someone asked, how will this look like on a quiz? If I have a question like this on the quiz, it'll probably be a map that's already drawn up for you. And maybe it might ask you like, oh, between what genes would you see maybe an 8% or a 14%? And you have to kind of look and be like, oh, well, the one with the furthest that are apart probably have to have that greater kind of frequency distance. Um, so because once again, the quiz that I will be giving you on Enmodo Online will be all multiple choice. So it's gonna be a picture and then you have to kind of analyze and pick apart that picture. It says, will the highest frequency be the outermost genes always? Not necessarily. They're the most furthest apart from each other, but there could be a gene outside those. And it actually relates to a question. There's a question number five that, there's something you have to consider. And even question number three, where, you know, there's a gene outside the one that is most furthest apart. So I think at this time, I'm gonna now do question number three. So we're gonna go from two to number three. So let me share with you our problem. Now, once again, there was an error on question number three. For question number three, this right here, the distance between A uh, genes A and L, the crossover frequency should be 20%. Okay. Uh, it should not um, be 15. So that was kind of a mistake right there. Okay, so looking at this uh, chart right here for number three, let's go back and share a new whiteboard with you. Uh, let's see. Erase all this. By the way, how do you guys like this whiteboard feature? I mean, hopefully my drawing, I'm using my touch screen, so that's why all the lines are kind of, uh. Okay, so now we're going to do number three. So for number three, let me first draw my chromosome. Oops, I still have my eraser. Oh wow, okay, that's different. Let me draw freehand. Okay, so there's my chromosome. So I'm gonna go back to the problem real quick. So notice right here, the one that has the greatest crossover frequency is W and L. So it looks like those are gonna be the ones that are most furthest apart at 35%. So I'm gonna to go to my map. And I'm gonna draw my genes right here. I'll draw W. I'm gonna draw L over here. And I know that once again, this will be 35%. Okay, so those are my two genes that are furthest apart. Once again, they don't necessarily have to be the outermost genes though. So let's go back to the problem and notice my next one is A and W is 15 and remember A and L is going to be 20%. So uh, looking at these two numbers, um, so, okay, I think I hear someone, you, you might wanna mute yourself and then maybe ask the question on chat or after I finish going through it. So once again, I'm gonna have um, my A through L is 15, uh, 20%, so that's gonna be my next one that I'm gonna draw. Let's 
I'm going to go back to my drawing. So I'm going to draw my A about maybe right here. And once again, from here to here, that's going to be 20%. So now going back to the problem, notice the next one is A and W is about 15%. So between A and W is 15%. So notice I already have A and W, which means this right here has to be about 15%. And right now, so far, everything looks good because 20 plus 15 does equal 35. So right now it's looking good. But then the next part is kind of where it gets a little bit tricky. If you go back to your problem, notice we have A and D is 20%. So uh, this is where it just, it's almost just like a little game that you have to play and you have to kind of work it out differently to see what makes best sense. So uh, what we're going to do is that it looks like D, since notice we don't have a relationship between L and D, D might have to be somewhere on the outside. So what's gonna happen, D was most probably somewhere on the outside, like right here, where from D to A is going to be 20%. And then that means D to W is 5%. And that ends up being what our map looks like. So once again, it's a, little, it's a little tricky playing around with the numbers. And this one, once again, is tricky because you're at first you're trying to figure out where does D go in here. But since there's no relationship to L, we are considering that, okay, then that has to possibly be on the outside. Now, so hopefully you have this drawn. Do you have questions? Actually, maybe my question to you guys here, what two genes would, would most likely be inherited together? If you said D and W, the, that would be correct. Once again, the genes that are most closest together are the ones that are going to be tend to going to be inherited more together. Because even if recombination occurs, both of those genes will probably go together uh, with each other since they're so close to each other. Okay, so those were the two questions. So wait, someone asked, can I draw the chromosome as a line? Yeah, guys, you could draw the chromosome as a line. You don't have to draw it like a box like I did. Um, that's some, something I do. Uh, once again, you could have different interpretations. It doesn't have to be a rectangle, but it should be some sort of line. It should be some sort of uh, linear. Now, Kaz, I want you guys to try the most challenging ones. Four and five are pretty challenging. I think four, Four, I think you could do. Five is the one that definitely messes with your head, but I'll give you one hint right now. You might wanna record this hint or I'll put this up on um, in Moto, uh, the video, so you could always look at it later. And your hint for number five is that when it comes to genes C and A, for number five, for genes C and A, they are not going to be inside the genes of B and D. Notice B and D have kind of the greatest distance away from each other, but actually C and A are not gonna be inside B and D. So there's my hint for you. I think that hint is definitely gonna help a whole lot of you actually figure that out. Okay, so that's what I wanted to cover. I want you guys to try try four and five. I'm hopefully you guys got the first one. Question number one, I think is the easiest. Now guys, on the quiz, I will tend to ask questions more similar to like maybe one and two, maybe three. I think something that, once again, that should be easy to understand. That's kind of the level they kind of give on the AP exam that I've seen in the past. So um, hopefully you're having a good, basic, decent understanding. Guys, if you're still having trouble, make sure that you reach out to me. You could send me an email, send me an Edmodo private message. 
uh, some students have already done that. And I try to answer them as quickly as I can. I could give you information, kind of help you out. Uh, you could share work with me and I could look at it and tell you like, oh yes, that's good. Uh, we'll not, you know, try this instead. So make sure that you do reach out to me. Um, guys, tomorrow I will start discussing um, evolution i'll talk maybe maybe go over maybe four or five tomorrow but at most i really want to start our conversation on evolution tomorrow so hopefully today you'll finish your two assignments your coloring sketch notes for genetic linkage and you'll finish this genetic problem set but again don't start turning these in i will let you know how exactly you'll be turning this in very soon okay so before uh we end this meeting do you guys have any final questions any concerns Do you need to print the outlines? No, guys, the note outlines, that's just for you if you want to copy down your notes, which I do recommend. Once again, studies always show that if you end up uh, copying things down on paper, sometimes you actually attempt to remember them better. But if you just want to read the PowerPoint, that's fine. That's me. Once again, I'm not picking, I never pick up any of the outlines. But yeah, you don't have to print them out. Um, uh, which ones? Um, I would only I would only do maybe the note outlines for evolution. I think the evolution ones are the ones that we're going to be talking about next. Someone asked, will I ever go over question number five? Yes, I will go over question number five. Um, so for question number five, I'll probably talk about that a little bit tomorrow, but I want to see if you guys could figure it out. Once again, I gave you that hint. That when it comes to number five, uh, once again, genes C and A are kind of outside of genes D and B. So hopefully that will help. And uh, someone asks, uh, is A and W 15% the same as W and A? Yes, that is the same right there. It doesn't matter if you inverse the letters or reverse the letters. Do I have any updates on the AP exam? Um, nothing so far. Once again, they'll give us more information on April 3rd. Uh, if you haven't heard, once again, the uh, exams are going to be all FRQ, 45 minutes. Uh, covering units one through six, which we've actually have covered. The only part that we're we talked about very soon as biotechnology. Um, they're not taking, um, they're kind of leaving ecology and evolution out. We will still cover evolution because it's really important and they still want us to actually cover these concepts. Uh, dual credit, guys, everything's still going according to plan with dual credit. Uh, we continue teaching. Uh, well, that's why we're covering evolution next. And you'll still, you guys are still in line to get your eight hours of community college credit if you're successful. Okay, well, if you guys if you guys are done, you could leave the meeting. What I'll do is I'll stay on for about three more minutes for anyone who wants to ask a question. And once again, you could either unmute yourself and ask a question or you can send it through chat. So once again, if you guys are done, you can leave. Or once again, I'll be here for about three more minutes. So when asked for uh, question number four, if C and D are most likely to be. I think you're on the right track, Juliana. So I don't want to say it out loud, but yeah, you're on the right track. May the force be with you as always. <laughs> 